So now we're finally going to put it together and look at Newton's second law and the F net equals MA. And so we're really going to talk about the MA part of this. Okay, so there's a couple of things we've got to keep in mind. This is something called mass. If you, you probably have some exposure or have heard the term before. Mass is the amount of matter or stuff an object is made of. Now, there's two kinds of masses technically, or at least in Newton's era that, that would have been. Um, we have gravitational mass, and this is the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is going to be equal to mg, m times g, m is mass, mass is measured in kilograms. That's our standard SI unit. We'll use a kg for that. So that would be kilograms. And you do m times g, g being 9.8 near the surface of the Earth. Um, and we, But, you know, the same acceleration due to gravity. That's the force of gravity when we're drawing the force of gravity on our free body diagram. There's also the inertial mass, which is the ma portion in our F net equals ma. That's the Newton's second law refers to this. It's the relationship between the net force we talked about. We've talked about acceleration in unit one, and now we're just talking about this mass. And again, it's the amount of stuff. And generally speaking, okay, equivalents, these are assumed to be equal, gravitational mass and inertial mass, okay? As far as we know, they're equivalent and will be assumed to be for the equivalent for the purposes of AP physics, okay? So just in case you ever hear the term gravitational mass or inertial mass, they are mathematical. As far as we know, there's the same amount. And for AP physics, we're not going to treat them any differently. The same M that we use in MG is the same M that we use in F net equals MA. So now let's put it all together. Let's stitch together everything that we've done and let's look at the problem solving steps when we're solving force problems. So first step, we're gonna draw that free body diagram. Second step, we're gonna identify the acceleration of the problem. This is what you should be thinking, is it zero? Are the things accelerating in a particular di direction? Is it speeding up or slowing down, right? So same direction as velocity is when it's speeding up, opposite direction of velocity, it's slowing down, right? So identify that acceleration. Now we want to assign axes and, and say which way is the x in the y direction and assign which way is the positive direction. That way we can do the correct signs for our f net as well as the correct sign for our acceleration, right? Just like in kinematics, we assigned a direction. The acceleration was positive or negative depending on which way we declare as positive. Okay, generally speaking, as a, as a rule of thumb, we're going to make the x direction in the direction of the acceleration especially if it's non-zero acceleration, okay? We're gonna decompose force vectors into the horizontal and vertical components if we need to, and then we're gonna calculate F net, then we're gonna set it equal to MA in the problem, and that will be our setup, okay? Couple of things to note that might happen in a problem is if an object is about to lose contact with the surface, we're gonna lose that force, that normal force goes away. Remember, normal force requires physical contact. So if we're about to on the verge of losing contact or right before it loses contact, then that normal force is getting close to zero. And just remember, when we're moving at constant velocity, the acceleration is zero, okay, and for the purposes of this. So let's, let's go through some problems going through all of those steps there, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this first problem. Two problems are hanging vertically Block A is a mass of 10 kilograms. Block B is a mass of 5 kilograms. Find the tension in both ropes. Okay, so first step, draw the free body diagram. So let's do the free body diagrams of block A and B because we want both of those forces. So block A, okay, and let's call this force T1. The tensions, we'll call this T2. That's what we're looking for, okay? So for block A, we're going to do force of gravity downward. And you can write as FG, but we already know the mass. It's going to be 10G because the force of gravity, right, is equal to MG. All right, then what's touching it? Well, we have T1 touching it. It's pulling upward in the direction of the rope. And then T2 is touching on the bottom. It's pulling again away from the object right in the direction of the rope. And that's the free body diagram for that guy. Now let's do block B. Okay, we're going to draw our free body diagram. Block B is a mass of 5 kilograms, so that's 5G or MG going down. Oops, 5G. Okay, what's touching it? T2 is touching it. It's going to pull in the direction away from in the direction of the rope, away from the object, or away from block B. And that's it. So we've completed drawing the free body diagram. Now let's identify the acceleration. Now, because they're just hanging here, they're not speeding up or slowing down, the acceleration is zero in both cases, okay? All right, assign axes and do positive, negative directions. Now, generally, if there's a direction of acceleration, we'll make that the axes, but in this case, we'll just make upward being positive. Doesn't really matter, because when the acceleration is zero, doesn't really matter. So for both problems, both free body diagrams will make upward as the positive direction. 
We're going to decompose force vectors into the horizontal and vertical components. We don't need to do that. And now we want to calculate F net, set it equal to MA. Now we said up was positive. So when we do F net here, T1 is going to be up as being positive. 10G is going to be pointing down, so it's negative. T2 is pointing down, so it's negative. And that's equal to MA. Now the A is zero, so it just equals zero in that case because the M times A, right? The mass is 10, but the A is zero. So that would just be zero. So this is our first question. Now we use G is 9.8 or 10. We, oftentimes it's okay to use 10, but if your teacher wants to use 9.8, use 9.8. But it's T1 minus, if G is 10, this is minus 100, minus T2 is equal to zero. So this is one set of equation from our F net equals MA. Okay, now let's do part B. Up is positive, so when I do F net equals MA, so the T2 is pointing up, so it's positive. The 5G is pointing down, so it's negative. And that equals 5 times 0, because the acceleration is 0, so it's 0. Now, if we do G of 10, then G is, uh, then this is 5 times 10 is going to be 50. And notice here we can solve for T2 is equal to 50 newtons. We then say, oh, okay, I can take that, plug it back into here, and solve for T1. So this would be T1 minus 100 minus 50 is equal to 0. That means T1 is going to be 150, and the units of forces are newtons. Just like that. Okay. Let's do another problem. Consider a box with a mass 12 kilograms sitting on top of a weight scale. Compute the reading of scale in each of the following scenarios. Now, reading of the scale, the way you want to un understand the reading of the scale is that's measuring the normal force. Okay. The normal, the, the, the way a scale measures the force is how much you're pushing on it, which is effectively the normal force. Okay. Elevators at rest. So we take a look at this box here. We're going to draw our free body diagram. That's our full first step. We have gravity. So that's going to be 12 G because it's 12 kilograms. It's touching the ground. So there's going to be a normal force here. So we've done the free body diagram. Now let's identify the acceleration. This K is at rest. So the acceleration is zero. Okay. Assign axes, positive, negative directions. We'll say up is positive. Right, and then decompose force vectors. Don't need to do that because we're not we don't have any forces at angles. Then we're gonna apply F net equals MA in both directions. So if we say up is positive, it's gonna be F net F. So F net equals MA. We're gonna do FN is pointing up, 12G is pointing down, and that's equal to zero. G is 10, so that's 120. So FN will equal 120 newtons, like that, right? Because if you plug in G equal to 10, and then solve for the FN there. Okay, now the elevator is moving upward with a constant velocity. What's the difference with the velocity being constant? Well, the acceleration is still zero. Free body diagram doesn't change. We haven't changed what's touching the object. So nothing changes in the free body diagram. The acceleration is still zero. Still, sign everything we did here was the same. So this is still going to be 120 newtons. Okay, now the elevator starts from rest and accelerating upwards at 2 meters per second squared. Your free body diagram is not any different. Right, because again, we haven't changed what's touching the objects. The only difference now, when we have, let's redraw the the forces here. This is 12 g, and we have our normal force. The only difference now is we have an upwards acceleration. So now they're saying the acceleration is upwards at two meters per second squared. So if we make up the positive direction, all right, then we can do F n minus 120 because this is 120, right? All right, is equal to m times a. Now, a is upwards, up is positive, so the a is positive 2 meters per second squared. So that's 12 times 2, and you can solve for fn here. That's 24 plus that. That's going to be 144 newtons. Okay. Now the elevator is moving upwards but slowing down at 2 meters per second squared. So the velocity is upwards, but if it's slowing down, it means the acceleration is downwards. So in this problem, what we're changing now and we'll just make this 120, is now the acceleration is pointing downwards at 2 meters per second squared. Now, a couple ways you can do this. You could still make up positive. If you make up positive, then you'll do Fn minus 120 is equal to 12. But now, because the acceleration is pointing down, the acceleration is negative. So you'd say negative 2 here. So if you solve for Fn here, this is negative 24. I think it's going to be 96. Yeah, 96 newtons. Or some people, like I said, one of the options is... You can assign, use the x direction will be the direction of the acceleration. You could say, oh, well, make down positive. If we make down positive, exact same process. When we do the F net equals MA, the 120 is pointing downward, so it's negative, it's positive. D 
the FN is pointing upward, so it's negative. That equals 12 times positive 2 because the downward acceleration is the same as what we declared as positive, so it's positive 2. You move that's over 120 minus FN is equal to 24. Move the FN over here. You do 120 minus 24. You still get 96 newtons. Okay, so that's why it doesn't matter which way you declare it's positive. As long as you're consistent, you just got to be very careful that the acceleration is not just a number you plug in, right? They told us two, but whether it's positive or negative depends on which way we define positive and negative to be. Okay, let's look at number three here. Following figure, the horizontal surface is frictionless. If two forces acting on it have a magnitude of 30 newtons and M is 10 kilograms, what's the magnitude of the resulting acceleration of the block? Okay, so do the exact same thing. We're going to draw a free body diagram. So we have gravity. That's going to be, uh, we'll say mg. Okay, we'll just use letters for now, and then we'll plug in numbers later. What's touching it? Well, we have the ground touching it. That exerts a normal force upward. Okay, what else is touching it? We have an F to the right here. What else is touching it? We have another F. It's down and to the right here. So this is F here. And this angle here is 30 degrees. All right? And that's everything that's touching it, right? These are nothing else is touching it. So we're done with the free body diagram. Identify the acceleration of the problem. Well, the forces are kind of to the right. So the acceleration makes sense is to the right. Okay, so we just, it can't be up or down because it's not going into the ground, not flying into the air. It's just sliding left or right. You might be say like, do I know if it's left or right? Overall, the forces are pointing to the right. So we know the acceleration is to the right. We don't know the amount, but we know the direction of it. And all we want to do is identify the direction of the acceleration. So we've done that. Assign axis positive, negative direction. So we'll make right positive because that's the direction of the acceleration. And we'll make up positive. Decompose force vectors into horizontal and vertical components. So Fn, Mg, and this F here are already horizontal vertical, but this F has to be decomposed, right? And we're going to decompose it like this. So this is going to be F cosine 30 degrees to the right and F sine 30 degrees to the left, just like we do the F net process, right? The net force, decompose that vectors. And now we apply F net in the X and the Y directions, right? So when we look at F net equals MA in the X direction, we said right was positive. We have two forces to the right. F cosine 30 is to the right. And just the regular F is to the right because we decompose this angled one. So plus F, that's equal to M times A. In the y direction, when we do F net equals MA, just to complete the problem, we say upward, FN is upward, so it's positive. F sine 30 is pointing downwards, so it's negative, because we said up was positive. And then MG is pointing down, so it is also negative. Now this one, you gotta remember your vectors. The acceleration is pointing to the right. That means there's no vertical component, right? Remember with the when we did projectile motion, decomposing vectors, there's only an x component. So the y component, the acceleration is zero here. So these are now your two equations that you get from the physics setup. The rest is now a math problem. The question is, is what is the acceleration? And now you just plug in numbers. You know this is, you know, f was 30, because they told you in the problem f was 30 and m was 10. So this is 30 cosine 30 degrees plus 30 is equal to 10 times a, divide both sides by 10, and you can calculate the acceleration. So 30 cosine 30 plus 30 divided by 10, and I'm gonna get a is about 5.6 meters per second squared, okay? That's how the process works, right? It's pretty straightforward. Once you do all of this, it is a math problem, often a systems of equations. Just gotta plug in and solve. Okay, so at that point, hopefully your algebra skills will come into play, but there's a lot that we built up to get to that equation point. Okay, we have two blocks connected by string or pulled across the horizontal surface by force applied to one of the blocks as shown. If each block has an acceleration two meters per second squared to the right, what is the magnitude F of the applied force? Okay, exact same steps. These are very different problems, but we still do the same steps here. So we're gonna draw the free body diagram. Okay, let's call this, this is a tension here. So let's draw the free body diagram of the one kilogram block. So he's gonna have gravity pointing down, one G. He's being, he's touching there. So um, that's gonna be a normal force from the surface. We'll call it FN on the one block. And then it has a rope pulling away from the object to the right, like that. Okay, now let's do the three kilogram block. Well, he's got gravity, three G. What's touching him? The ground, 
the normal force from the ground on him. What else is touching him? He's got a tension. He's got the rope pointing to the left, pulling away from this object. That's the rule for that free body diagram. And then we have an F here at an angle, and that's at an angle 60 degrees. Okay, now draw the free body diagram. Identify the acceleration in the problem. Well, they tell you it's accelerating two meters per second squared to the right. So we know the direction of the acceleration. Okay, cool. I assign axes and positive and negative directions. So we'll make right positive because that's the direction of the acceleration. We'll make up positive. Cool. Decompose any force vectors. Most of them are vertical or horizontal except for this F, which we need to decompose into the X and Y components as F cosine 60 degrees and F sine 60 degrees. And if you struggle with this part of the problem, go back and look at the lesson on vector decomposition and calculating F net, those two lessons before. Now we apply F net equals MA in both the horizontal and vertical directions, okay? So for this guy, let's see, this guy, his X direction, he only has one force to the right, that's T, is equal to his mass times the acceleration. So that's gonna be two, MA. In the Y direction, okay, it's gonna be FN1 is pointing up, the one G is pointing down. Right, but the acceleration is only pointing to the right, so this equals zero in the vertical direction because there's no acceleration in the y direction. The arrow is only pointing to the right. So remember, you got to treat the acceleration still like a vector, right? We got to think about the x and the y components separately. This guy in the x direction, we have f cosine 60 degrees pointing to the right, we have tension pointing to the left, and there's no other horizontal forces right, and the x forces. So that equals the mass of that guy times his acceleration, which is positive too, because we said right was positive, like that. And then in the y direction, if we look at the upward force, we have the Fn3 is pointing up, F sine 60 degrees also pointing up, and we said up was positive, and the 3g is pointing down, and those handle the vertical arrows, right, vectors. That equals zero, because there's no vertical acceleration, because the acceleration is only pointing to the right. There's no Y component, so the Y component is zero. Now, we want to solve for F. Now, F we can solve for here, but we need to know T. But in this problem, it told us T, so we're just going to plug the T equals 2 into there. We get F cosine 60 degrees minus 2 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6. So F cosine 60 degrees is going to equal 8, and then we solve for F. It's going to be 8 divided by cosine of 60 degrees, and that's going to be 16 newtons like that. Okay, and that's the process, right? It's the same steps that we're going to do when we're solving forces problems. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in the AP classes.